So you guys really liked my best plants video. So by popular demand, today we're gonna cover the best fish for aquaponics. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from New Agrarian on YouTube where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. So I did a video a while back on best fish in aquaponics, but I had some music blaring obnoxiously loud and I apologize for that. It was kind of like in the beginning of my video editing stages. So today we're going to kind of revisit that subject with nothing but the sound of running water in the background. Sorry, I can't turn that down. So there are a lot of good options for fish in the aquaponics world and a lot of different farms around the country and the globe have been successful with different species. The first characteristic of a good fish in aquaponics is kind of specific to your area and that is accessibility. Depending on where you live, you're gonna have access to different fish. So luckily where I live, there's a couple of local hatcheries around here that have catfish, they have goldfish, they've got tilapia, and I've also met some tilapia farmers over the years that I kinda trade with year by year. Maybe you have a supplier near you that sells hybrid striped bass, trout, perch, something of that nature, but the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is definitely look in your area because you might have a couple hidden gem fish farms in your area that you can buy fish from. Definitely do some research in your area and see if there's any fish hatcheries, pet shops, or successful farmers in your area that may be able to help you. There's nothing wrong with taking fish like perch, bluegill, bass, and raising them in aquaponics. Just check the fish keeping laws in your area before you take fish from the wild. But fish that are legally allowed to be kept from the wild are another good option. The only concern with fish from the wild is that a lot of the time they need to be feed trained. So you definitely want to start them off with sinking fish food because they're not used to eating fish food in captivity, so they're going to want live food, which can get expensive. I've experimented with putting live food and pellets in at the same time in the beginning stages, but it is way easier to feed train young fish than old fish. The next thing that I would consider is are the fish valuable? Can they provide you value at your farm or operation? Before I continue with that, unless you're a home grower growing food for your family, I definitely would not have fish in your system as simply fertilizer makers. The upkeep and maintenance of fish is really not worth the investment if you're not selling them. So make sure that you can make a profit from fish if you're gonna raise them on your farm. Is there a demand for these fish live? Is there a demand for these fish on ice? Is there a demand for these fish gutted? Is there a demand for fish fillets? If you're going to put money into raising them, you need to make money from the fish. Another thing going along with the value is breeding them in captivity. So some species of fish are easily bred in captivity. I've been raising tilapia for eight years, so that's kind of where most of my experience lies. But they are definitely a fish that's super easy to breed in captivity, and that allows me to kind of keep my stocks replenished which is a nice bonus when it comes to raising tilapia. There's other fish like trout that people have been able to successfully breed in captivity. Catfish can be bred in captivity, but that mostly occurs in like ponds outside. Cyprinids can be bred in captivity, but being able to replenish your fish stocks on your own is very, very helpful and valuable. And the last thing that I consider when I'm choosing a fish species is their hardiness. So I've never experienced a disease breakout while raising tilapia in eight years. I have experienced a few catfish diseases. I have experienced trout diseases. That being said, disease hardiness is something that you definitely need to consider when choosing a species. In addition to disease hardiness, you want to consider your water quality hardiness. Again, tilapia, super, super durable when it comes to water quality and temperature. It can be difficult to maintain the temperature in a greenhouse, especially in warm months. So if you're raising a cool water fish like a trout, it may be difficult. There are farms in California that raise rainbow trout in captivity. They keep the ambient temperature in their greenhouse in the 70s, which allows them to be successful raising trout. But that's all going to depend on your area. In the summer in here, it's difficult to keep the temperature below 88, 90 degrees. So warm water fish like tilapia definitely excel. Let's quickly touch on each of the species that I have some experience with. Starting with tilapia, like I said, they're kind of the most durable fish that I've ever come across. I've never had disease problems with them. They grow relatively quickly. They're durable when it comes to water quality parameters. They're just a tough fish all in all. They are a great option if you can get them. Channel catfish are another great option. Very tolerant of water quality parameters. They grow pretty fast and they have pretty much no limits on their growth. I've raised catfish before eight to 10 pounds in these tanks behind me. And the meat quality is pretty good. Trout are a very desirable fish to raise for their meat customers seem to like it. But again, they're very sensitive to warm temperatures. Rainbow trout are the fish that's most likely to be able to tolerate warm temperatures, but browns, 
Brookies. Those guys are really sensitive to warm temperatures. Trout also need higher dissolved oxygen levels. I've seen a few farms that have successfully grown hybrid striped bass. From what I've read about hybrid striped bass, the one thing you've got to be careful with them is adding chlorides to your water because they are sensitive to chlorides. Cyprinids, goldfish and koi are another great option for aquaponics if you can sell them. Even if you can't sell them, they are relatively cheap to maintain and buy. You can buy 20 for one dollar at some stores. Koi, not so much, but goldfish, definitely you can buy a lot for very cheap. You can also breed them in captivity and they'll eat and they'll grow and they will grow vegetables. One other species of fish that I'll be experimenting with next year is barramundi. There's a barramundi hatchery kind of near me, a state over in Massachusetts. So stay tuned if you wanna see updates on barramundi cause I'll be raising them in these tanks next year. So that's pretty much it guys. I mean, there's no sure fire best fish in aquaponics I would say. It really depends on your greenhouse and your specific needs. All in all, a fish that you can get readily, sell, and maintain is gonna be your best fish. So definitely explore those species of fish. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. And thanks for watching.